Hey there, folks. So we just wanted to show you the difference in the different woods out there. We happen to be standing in a plum orchard here in Yolo County, California, where these plums are green. They're little guys now and they're coming up. But what we wanted to demonstrate was we do get a lot of people asking about the crystallized clinker that's left behind and it's mostly with our plum and we want to show you the reason why and the difference between so when we're harvesting these trees this orchard slated for us to take it out this next year um, it's an older orchard this would be representative of an older plum tree they're not very big and if you get in here closely and you look at this you can see the way this, this bark grows and it flakes off, right? And so what happens is, is, is when they're working in these orchards, that dust is flying around and it's landing, say, up here in the crook of this tree, up into here, and that dust is laying on this. And then that bark grows over it and grows, and it grows into it. And there's where you get your minerals and stuff. We believe that the bark is where the heat and the flavor is. In fact, we know it just from testing. And you don't ever see stick burner guys stripping the bark off. They want that bark in there for that flavor and that heat. So we have a really high bark to wood ratio. This tree is only, and this is an older, this is one of the bigger older ones. This thing's maybe seven inches in diameter total, but most of these are averaging four or five inches. But then you've got all this bark going around that's mixing in with that little bit of heartwood. And then when you get up into the sapwoods that were taken, you get more and more. So you get what's called a very high bark to wood ratio. That's also why you guys love the plum is because of that equates to more flavor and a different flavor profile. That's where you're getting all those sweet tones and you're getting that a little bit stronger tone of smoke because of it's in this bark. This bark is where the minerals are, but the drawback is you're going to get clinker. The thing about the plum pellets is if you're going to do a long brisket cook, highly, highly recommend you blend that about 30% of plum to 70% of almond. You'll still get those nice sweet notes and those nice flavor profiles, but you won't get that clinker burn up, build up and you won't have a flame out at hour 12, 13. We highly recommend that you go ahead and you mix it with the almond. The difference between us and every other manufacturer is we handle 100% of the process. So you know you're getting 100% of this orchard wood here and you're getting it harvested. You're not getting any furniture, cabinet, flooring remnants. You're getting all pure hardwoods. And when we say it's all plum, it's all plum. When we say it's a plum or an almond, you're getting that. And that's a big part of what we're doing that makes this so valuable to you as a barbecue. That fuel really, really does matter on the flavor profile on what you're gonna end up with. So that's kind of a tutorial on what's going on when you guys are seeing more of this. Make sure you clean your fire pots, especially with the plum. Also remember that this is the difference in premium barbecue. If you're using premium proteins, you wanna use premium woods to end up cooking. The fuel matters. If you're using anybody else's pellet, you're not getting the guarantee. We're the only ones in the industry that harvest the trees, grind them, take them to our custom mill, and build them into a premium quality pellet. And so if you're using the Naughty Wood product, you know what you're getting. Everybody else just says 100% hardwood. That means they can be using furniture, flooring, and cabinet remnants. They can get woods from all kinds of different places. Most of these woods are alder. The reason why they're using alder if it's it's readily available it's the softest hardwood on the scale it's high production cheap to get and easy to easy to turn into pellets the other thing you need to know about the industry out there and where we make the difference is they strip the bark off and they use it as a heat source to dry their wood we naturally dry our wood and then we make your pellet so we get that custom artisan pellet that you can't get anywhere else all these things are important to know that these guys can source woods from anywhere, make these pellets. There's no regulation in the business, so we can all source woods from wherever and we can use them. So these are just some different tips that uh, we want to point out to you when you're grilling. The fuel is as important as the protein.